Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Pagani Design PD1664. This watch is available from Pagani Design Factory Store on AliExpress. During the Black Friday sale, the price of this watch will be €78. Euro. So firstly, let's look at the box that the watch comes in, and then I'll talk you through the other items one gets with the piece. So the Pagani Design PD1664 comes in a black cardboard watch box, as you can see. Inside, the watch sits on a piece of foam inside a foam cutout panel, as one would expect. Although basic, it does suffice in protecting the watch in shipping, and I think it's perfectly acceptable to use a basic cardboard watch box. Bear in mind that this is a low tier price point piece at only €78. Euro. This is the microfiber polishing cloth that comes with the watch. I always think it's a nice touch to get a branded microfiber polishing cloth, irrespective of the price point of a piece. This is the plastic guarantee card. And as usual, the reverse isn't filled in. However, I'm pleased to report that the watch is covered by the usual 12 month international guarantee, which is very reassuring. This is the plastic tag that comes with the watch. And lastly, this is the owner's instruction manual. Although, base, although basic, it is clear and concise. It does have clear diagrams and the instructions are in English. It details the operation of the movement used, which is the Seiko VK63 Mecha Quartz. So with regards to the specifications of the piece, this is the Pagani Design PD1664. The watch is clearly an homage to the Rolex Daytona and it does that very well with very similar proportions. 40 mm case diameter, it has a lug to lug measurement of 47.5 mm, a thickness of 12.1 mm and a lug width of 20 mm. The rubber strap tapers from 20 mm at the lugs down to the buckle and tang and as you can see the buckle and tang is finished to a high standard engraved with the Pagani design brand emblem to a high standard. I like the thick gauge of metal, brushed satin finish to the top side, underside and flanks, good heavy gauge of stainless steel so it's going to be durable. Two keepers on the strap, they both slide, but there is a detail which I'll show you, which I really like about the strap. There are two notches either side of the strap, which the first of the sliding keepers engages with. If you look closely, you can see the two notches, and they prevent the first keeper sliding out of position. So it's a very innovative design, and I like the use of those two notches, a pair either side. They work very well to secure the keeper from sliding out of position. With regards to the strap, it's one of my favourite aspects of the piece. It uses stainless steel quick release spring bar, so one doesn't need a spring bar tool to remove the strap. I like the detail because it's got these ridges on the underside. They allow for ventilation to allow for sweat and perspiration to wick away from the wrist, and they allow for airflow to the wrist to prevent it becoming sticky when wearing it in hot weather and one's wrist is hot and sweaty. Plenty of holes in the strap to allow for fine tuning the adjustment. Another detail I like about it is it's tapered, it's thicker at the spring bar end and it gradually tapers in thickness down to the buckle and tang where it's thinner. So that's good because it's reinforced at the spring bar where it needs to be stronger because often rubber straps tend to split and crack around the spring bar due to wear and tear. So it's thicker where it needs to be reinforced and it's more soft and supple due to being thinner uh, around the holes and also at the buckle and tang ends. So it's more flexible and therefore that enhances the comfort. So very aesthetically pleasing because it's also got a ridge down the center section and it's just a very good looking rubber strap. It feels stiffer than silicon rubber, it feels more like vulcanized rubber. So although stiffer than silicon, it is still comfortable because it is very flexible and it's going to be more durable than silicon. The problem with silicon straps is they are very comfortable but they don't tend to last for a long time because they tend to split and crack, especially around the spring bar as I've detailed. Vulcanized rubber straps are stiffer, but they have a longer lifespan. So this is a good compromise between vulcanized rubber and silicon rubber. It feels soft and supple like a silicon strap, but more durable like a vulcanized strap. Now, one thing to note is with the PD664, sorry, the PD1664, the end link is actually integrated, it's part of the case, so one cannot remove the solid end link, although it does look like one can remove it. With the PD1644, uh, that is the bracelet version of this piece, and one can remove the end link to fit rubber straps, but of course one then has a gap between the end of the straight end of the strap and the head of the piece. So the PD1664 can only be used with straight end straps because as you can see, the end link is actually part of the case. It's not removable. So that's something to note. If you want to be able to fit bracelets and also straps, you need to go for the PD1644 rather than this 
PD1664. With regards to the rest of the specification, flat sapphire crystal. Now there is no AR coating on the underside and as you can see it is a highly reflective flat sapphire crystal and also the meteorite dial is metallic looking and also highly reflective as are the baton hands which are Daytona style. I like the black contrasting subdials. I like the symmetry at 9, 6 and 3 o'clock and they've made the correct decision by citing the date complication between the 4 and 5 o'clock indices on the dial. The white date wheel with black Arabic numerals is clearly legible. The meteorite dial has a silver tone to it which changes colour in the light and it's absolutely beautiful to look at. I want to give Pagani Design due credit because they have executed this meteorite dial to perfection. It's absolutely gorgeous, the metallic grains in the meteorite dial when one tilts it in the light. The attention to detail on the dial is very good. It's clearly an homage to the Rolex Daytona dial layout. But if you look closely at the subdials, around the circumference of the black subdials, they have silver rings. And it's just absolutely beautiful the way the silver rings of the subdials catch the light. So very well executed symmetrical dial layout. It's clearly legible despite the lack of the anti-reflective coating on the underside of the flat sapphire crystal. Now my only criticism to it is that they've put sport in an abhorrent uh, font underneath chronograph and I would prefer that Pagani Design delete the word sport because it really does cheapen the look of the watch. It would look better if it just said Pagani Design and chronograph rather than sport in red. But other than that the dial is beautiful to look at. They've done a good job of these silver applied indices which complement these silver baton hands which are Daytona style as I've detailed. With regards to the case back, it, it is solid 316L grade stainless steel. It provides an effective hermetic seal to 100 metres of water resistance, which is perfectly acceptable. Beautiful machining, as you can see, it actually refracts the light rather like a CD. And the centre section is bead blasted matte effect with a starfish emblem. And it's absolutely beautiful, low profile, mirror polished to the circumference and nice large milled slots very well executed. I like the fact it's low profile and flat because that does enhance the comfort level when wearing the piece for long periods of time such as 8 to 12 hours per day. So it's a very comfortable and smooth well finished case back and 100 meters is perfectly acceptable and they deserve full credit because it is finished to a very high standard bearing in mind that this is a low tier price point piece. Flawless finishing to the underside of the case which is brushed satin finish so the finishing to the head of the piece throughout is exceptional. Flawless mirror polishing to the flanks and they really deserve due credit because this is the kind of case finishing one would expect to see on a mid-tier piece or even a high-tier piece. When I'm talking about mid-tier pieces I'm referring to pieces that are in excess of €500 Euro. and at €78 Euro, it's very unusual to get this kind of high quality mirror polishing to the flanks of a case within the low tier. Flawless mirror polishing to the tops of the lugs which complement the mirror polishing to the centre section of the end links which are part of the head of the piece. One thing I really like about the PD1664 is the ceramic bezel. As you can see, it's an homage to the Daytona bezel and they've done that very well because the engraving is done to a very high standard on the tachymeter scale. The ticks and also the Arabic numerals are inlaid with white paint to a very high standard. Absolutely flawless. I love the glossy look of the ceramic. It is finished to a very high standard. And again, they deserve full credit for this because this is the kind of ceramic bezel with tachymeter scale one would expect to see on a mid-tier piece costing in excess of €500. Euro. To get this quality of ceramic tachymeter bezel at this price point at €78 Euro really is exceptional. So the quality of the sapphire crystal, the ceramic bezel insert and the polishing to the case is all outstanding. So I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how it fits on my 8 inch wrist. Now although it does fit my 8 inch wrist, the strap is a fraction too short as you can see to engage in both of the sliding keepers. So that's something to note, if you have an 8 inch wrist you are going to need to fit a longer strap to the piece. But having said that it will fit up to a 7 inch wrist with no difficulty whatsoever. So if you're a collector with a 6 to 7 inch wrist this rubber strap will fit you to perfection. Absolutely gorgeous on wrist. It's an incredibly comfortable piece to wear. Now the thing to note is it's a very lightweight piece. It lacks heft. It's only 92 grams on the rubber strap. 
it's significantly lighter than the PD1644, which is the bracelet version, and that's something to consider. If you're a collector with a smaller wrist of 6 to 7 inches and you're looking for comfort, if you want to wear this as a daily wear piece for long periods of time, such as 8 to 12 hours per day, I highly recommend you buy the PD1664 rather than the PD1644, which is the bracelet version. The rubber strap really is very comfortable and they've got the proportions done to perfection. 20mm lug width perfectly balances the 40mm head of the piece. Now one thing I really like about it is it's very low profile. It's only 12.1mm thick due to having a flat sapphire crystal and as I've showed you it also has a very low profile flat stainless steel screw down case back. So this is easily going to slip underneath a shirt cuff if you wear business shirts and it's a very low profile and comfortable piece ideal if you have a six to seven inch wrist if you're looking for a lightweight piece 94 grams is very comfortable it feels weightless on wrist rather like an invisible watch now the other thing i like about it is they have got the lug to lug measurements very close to perfection as you'll know from my previous reviews i consider 48 millimeters to be the sweet spot regardless of whether you have a six to seven inch wrist or a larger 7 to 8 inch wrist respectively. This is 47.5, so very close to the 48 millimeter perfection, and it really will fit any wrist size. It really is the perfect proportions. 40 millimeter head of the piece, 47.5 millimeter lug to lug measurement, only 12.1 millimeters thick, and the 20 millimeter lug width is perfect. So the proportions are outstanding. Just a very good looking piece. The comfort level is 10 out of 10. The feel good factor is 10 out of 10. So let's look at the crown. Let's test the crown action. It's got a coin edge finish, solid 316L grade stainless steel crown, mirror polished dome cap to it, embossed with the Pagano design emblem to a high standard. Let's test the action. Absolutely silky smooth. Pagano design deserve full credit for this. This is one of the greatest crown executions they have ever made. It's something they do very well on the PD1644. Absolutely silky smooth. So, in the first position, one can pull it out to the first click, and that is the quick, sorry, that's the second click, I'll try again, that's the first click. Right, in the first click position, it's the quick set complication position, as you can see. And one thing I really like about this Seiko VK63 Mecha Quartz is the quick set complication for the dates it has a nice click feeling when it clicks over to the next day. And it's an absolute pleasure to use the quick set complication, as you can see. Pulling it out to the second click position hacks the movement. If you look closely at the six o'clock sub dial, which is the second dial, you can see the second hand has now stopped dead. So it is possible to set the time precisely to the second. That's something I really like about the VK63. The Mecha Quartz movement has hacking. So absolute pleasure to set the time, silky smooth, lighter resistance to the gearing in the VK63 Mecha Quartz compared to the Seiko NH35A automatic. It feels very silky smooth and I really like the feeling of it. Pushing it back in, it's got a nice positive click and if you look closely at the six o'clock subdial, you'll see the second hand begins to tick around the subdial again. Now, one feature I like about the VK63 is in order to save battery life, for example, if you wear this in rotation as part of a collection and you want to extend the three year battery life, you can pull out the crown to position two, the time setting position. That will disengage the battery from the Mecha Quartz movement. So that will significantly extend the battery. For example, if you're not going to be wearing it for a week or a month at a time, you can pull out the crown and that will actually save the battery life. It switches, it cuts the power from the battery to the Mecha Quartz movement. So it's easy to extend the three-year battery life by hacking the movements, pulling out the crown to position two. So I'll just screw it back down and test the action. Immediate thread pickup. This is outstanding uh, execution of the screw down crown which provides an effective hermetic seal to 100 meters. So let's test the chronograph complication and the screw down pushers. I like that this uses screw down pushers rather than just the conventional pushers. Silky smooth thread action to the top pusher. I'll test the bottom pusher as well. Absolutely silky smooth. The threading on these pushers and the crown are all outstanding. And Pagani Design deserve full credit for this because this is the kind of screw down pusher action one would expect to see on a mid tier piece costing in excess of 500 euro. So let's test the chronograph complication. Good firm resistance to the top pusher. I like the spring loaded action. It takes quite a lot of force to push it in and it's got a very satisfying click when the chronograph complication is activated. If you look at this, the chronograph hand, it's now beginning to tick around the dial. 
Pressing the top pusher again stops the chronograph dead. It's got a nice firm resistance. I like the spring-loaded action. It feels solid. It feels reliable. It feels like a very well-engineered pusher. Pushing the lower pusher will activate the flyback complication, and that will make the chronograph hand fly back to the 12 o'clock index on the dial. Nice positive click, good firm resistance, and needless to say, the VK63 Mecha Quartz is a very accurate movement. The, the chronograph hand flies back to six o'clock, uh, sorry, 12 o'clock on the dial perfectly every time it's bang on, and I really like that. So I'll just test screwing the pushers back down. Immediate thread pickup, absolutely silky smooth, lovely smooth light thread action. And I'll just check the bottom one. Again, immediate thread pickup, really silky smooth. I've previously reviewed a Rolex Daytona, which was a 20,000 euro piece, a high tier piece on my channel. And I can tell you that the screw down crown and also the screw down pushes on this PD1664 don't feel very different to that 20,000 euro Rolex Daytona, which this is clearly on a march to the Daytona. And really, Pagani Designs deserve full credit because to get that silky smooth thread action on the pushes and the crown really is a credit to their machining. It really is very impressive. Silky smooth action on all three, the two pushes and also uh, the screw down crown. Right, so let's test the uh, loom. I'll do a loom test and we'll see how it performs when it's charged up to its absolute maximum. So as always, I'm going to use my 100 UV LED torch to charge it up to its absolute peak. Right, so that's now fully charged and as you can see, it clearly uses C3 Luminova rather than C3 Super Luminova. Now, I would like to see Pagani Design upgrade the C3 Luminova to using either BGW9 Super Luminova or alternatively C3 Super Luminova. The use of C3 Luminova is clearly a cost-cutting measure. Now, I think it would be worth them upgrading it, and even if that means increasing the price, collectors would be happy to pay in excess of €78 Euro for the piece with C3 Super Luminova or BGW9. As you can see, the applied indices and the baton hands don't allow for great plots or C3 Luminova to be applied. It's okay. It's glowing to an acceptable standard and it is emitting enough brightness to be legible. But however, it really does need improvements. And I would describe it as acceptable for the price points, but it's one of the negatives of the PD1664, the weak performance of the loom. So there is room for improvement, although it is acceptable. So let's discuss the movement used because it's one of my favourite aspects of the piece. This uses the Seiko VK63, which is a mecha quartz movement made in Japan. Now, Pagani Design deserve full credit because they could have taken the cost-cutting measure of using the Sunon PE903, which is a popular choice for Chinese brands because the Sunon PE903 is made in China. The Seiko VK63 is made in Japan, so it's more expensive but it's a much better quality movement. The build quality, the quality control, the reliability, and also the materials are all higher grade. So the VK63 is a mecha quartz movement with a three year battery life. Now, as I've discussed, one can extend the three year battery life to four or five years simply by pulling out the screw down crown to position two, the time setting position, and that hacks the movement and it also disengages the battery from the mecha quartz movement. So that significantly will extend the battery life. The other thing to note is the three-year battery life is based upon you using the chronograph complication for 60 minutes per day, but you are not going to be using the chronograph complication for anything like 60 minutes per day in reality. So it's nothing unusual for a VK63 battery to last for four or even five years. And that's something I really like about it. One can purchase this piece and wear it for four to five years without having to change the battery and I think that is outstanding. So the VK63 is a reliable, well-proven workhorse mecha quartz movement, and it's also very accurate. This is something that is my favorite aspect of it. The stated accuracy of the VK63 is plus or minus 20 seconds per month, not 20 seconds per day or 20 seconds per week, plus or minus 20 seconds per month. That is better accuracy than plus or minus one second per day. And to get a chronograph piece, with a Seiko movement, the VK63 made in Japan, with plus or minus one second per day accuracy, is incredible at only 78 euro. And I think Pagani Design deserve full credit because the movement is the correct choice for this piece. And really it's loaded with specification. One is getting a ceramic bezel insert, meteorite dial, 
sapphire crystal, screw down pushers, 100 meters of water resistance, screw down crown, and screw down case back. And 100 meters of water resistance for a chronograph piece is perfectly acceptable. So I like everything about it. Now, really the only negatives you need to consider is the lack of AR coating and the weak performance of the loom. It uses C3 Loom Nova, as I've shown you in the loom test. They really are the only two negatives, no AR coating and weak loom. But however, one has to express, expect some cost-cutting measures because this is only €78 Euro in the Black Friday sale. So lastly, I'll summarise the piece. What do I think of it overall? Well, when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, the watch should meet two criteria. It should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. So I'm going to base the price point on the Black Friday sale price, which is €78. Euro. Yes, this is unquestionably excellent quality, and yes, it is unquestionably excellent value. This is one of the greatest Pagani design watches ever made. The PD1664 really does represent the very best of Pagani design. The quality control of this watch is excellent. The build quality is excellent. The materials, the finishing are all excellent. Really, it's an outstanding piece. The thing that most impresses me about this watch, and it's something that so many brands get incorrect, the quality of the thread action on the screw down pushes on this watch is 10 out of 10. The quality of the screw down crown action on this watch is 10 out of 10. And to get that kind of quality thread action on the screw down pushes and the crown at only 78 euro is reason alone to purchase this watch. The Seiko VK63 is very strong specification. That's another reason to purchase the watch. So overall, I really like it, and I think that this is an outstanding watch. I'm going to declare it a champagne watch for lemonade money. So I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Pagani Design PD1664. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.